Dallas grass. And Dallas grass itself is not poisonous, but Dallas grass has uh, seed heads that are very distinctive, and these seed heads become infested with infected with a, uh, a particular fungus and this fungus is an ergot and ergots uh, uh, can produce some very nasty uh, side effects. Uh, typically what we see with Dallas grass just so that you can identify uh, uh, Dallas grass it's a warm season perennial grass uh, very common in our pastures you see it almost uh, uh, as you know just about every pasture in in the southeast uh, the seed head is very distinctive. It has these three to six spikes that are fairly long and they tend to droop at the end of the, uh, of the, of the seed head. But what happens is this fungal mass will begin to grow in place of the seed. So it takes the place of the seed using the nutrients out of the plant and uh, begins as a, just a tan or orange uh, mass and then that mass will begin to become dark and shrink as uh, time goes along. The toxicity in this particular case is a uh, uh, tremorigenic mycotoxin, uh, paspalatrums, uh, and in this particular case what happens is it is interfering with nerve signals uh, and causing uh, problems with the nervous system. And uh, again, it's only found in the affected seed heads, which is nice because we can actually clip those seed heads out and uh, many times get rid of the issue or limit the amount that gets into the animal. Now, one issue is, is this myto mycotoxin is very stable and it will stay in the hay. If you make hay out of these areas, uh, the hay can be contaminated as well, and this is a very common occurrence. Uh, it affects all grazing animals, uh, uh, just about all of the uh, livestock I've heard of problems uh, at one time or other. Uh, typically, we're going to see uh, signs as early as three days after the introduction to the infected forage. Uh, it doesn't take very long for this to start, and it causes a, a, a group of symptoms we just call staggers. Uh, Dallas grass staggers is basically the lack of coordination, a lot of trembling, uh, being very nervous, and very prone to uh, um, being unable to stand or at least to keep their balance and, and have problems as, re as, re as a result of that. Now, commonly, this is not going to cause death in and of itself. However, commonly, we also see these animals get down into a, into a pond or get into a scenario where uh, because of their lack of coordination, they, they uh, can, can actually die as a result of this. Oftentimes it's in a pond. I've had a couple of cases where they've fallen off a cliff uh, in the mountains and actually had some uh, uh, deaths as a result of those injuries. The treatment, uh, number one, is to uh, change to a different forage, uh, change to a different pasture of some sort. Clipping those seed heads to prevent ingestion is also uh, critically important. Now the recovery time here, once they've been removed from that, they recover, but uh, sometimes it's just three to five days in some of the more mild cases, but it may be as long as three weeks in some very severe cases uh, for recovery to occur. So oral administration of activated charcoal can help. Uh, some of these laxatives can help as well to try to flush it out of the system, uh, but generally speaking, they will recover fairly rapidly uh, when they are um, damaged. Next one is, uh, is ground cherry. Ground cherry is a very interesting one, uh, uh, one that has been used uh, as, as even a human food in, in, uh, in bygone eras. Uh, there are a whole suite of these in this same uh, family, um, and actually we'll come back to this family again because there's some others that are very related to this that I wanna go into some more detail on too. Uh, this one can be an annual perennial herb uh, very branched, uh, spreading at the top, uh, small at the bottom, spreading out at the top. Uh, the leaves are going to be alternate. Uh, this this funnel-shaped yellow flower is very distinctive, but the very distinctive part is this uh, uh, seed or the, the berry is down inside of this papery sac that you can see here. And uh, that is a very distinctive uh, uh, sign for, for ground cherry. Uh, it's typically going to be found in disturbed areas, not something that's going to uh, be common out in, in uh, well-established pastures. Uh, thin woodlands, the field edges and that sort of thing is where this one's going to show up more commonly anyway. The toxicity in this particular case, uh, solanine and other related alkaloids. Uh, and this is in the nightshade family and we'll talk about the nightshades uh, in just a little while as well. Uh, and uh, they generally all have the same kind of uh, characteristics. 
the toxins are concentrated in the unripe berries and the leaves, uh, but interestingly enough, they're not toxic if the, if the uh, berries are ripe. So uh, many times uh, um, uh, folks would actually use the berries off of that, uh, the ground cherry, uh, to uh, once they become ripe, and they'll use them in jams and different things as well. But uh, I, I don't know if I would uh, chance it or not. This is one that's very, very toxic and can cause some real problems if you happen to not uh, give it enough time to ripen here. The animals that are affected, pretty much everything is going to be affected by this particular one if it uh, ingests the material. The signs of uh, problems would be, again, just general weakness, excessive salivation in this case, uh, shortness of breath, very difficult breathing, uh, progressive paralysis that might occur as well, and then acute hemorrhagic uh, gastroenteritis uh, can be a major uh, issue with these animals and ultimately they collapse and die. Treatment-wise, uh, there are some compounds like tannic acid, charcoal that we can uh, use and, and put into the animal to try to bind up some of that material. Uh, evacuating the uh, stomach contents can also be uh, helpful as well. Uh, then there are also some specific uh, GI protectants that can be used to, to help that animal uh, as well. Now, going on to uh, hemp dogbane. Hemp dogbane is one that is also uh, a, a very common problem for us uh, around the southeast. It's a perennial herb with this characteristic uh, milky juice, kind of like a milkweed. We'll talk about milkweeds in a, in a little bit. Uh, very common uh, around. We see that uh, typically this, uh, this fruit with these two long slender pods with uh, really silky haired seeds that come out as, as a result of that. Um, the, these are going to be fairly commonly found around disturbed areas on the roadsides and in the edges of the fields and the, on the ed, margins of, of the woodlands. The toxicity in this particular case, uh, uh, there are various resins as well as a cardiac glycoside, uh, including uh, uh, Simran. And this is actually one that was once used as a cardiac stimulant in the past. Uh, but uh, in this particular case, it's too much of a, of a good thing, perhaps. All plant parts are toxic, uh, whether it's uh, fresh material or dry. This can uh, uh, stay out there and become a real issue. Now, this one doesn't take a whole lot to uh, cause uh, animal death. A lethal dose may be less than 15 grams. So it doesn't take much at all to cause a real issue. All grazing animals, again, are going to be susceptible to this particular problem. And from a sign standpoint, what we see is the rapid pulse, dilation of the pupils, weakness, convulsions, and ultimately uh, uh, vomiting and uh, also death. What's a, another characteristic of this is the blue coloration of the mucous membranes, uh, similar to some of the other uh, symptoms that we've seen before. And then uh, anything from a mild my myocardial degeneration or cardiac arrest, and uh, the animals will die generally fairly quickly within about 6 to 12 hours of consumption. So this is one that doesn't take very long. Typically, you're going to find these animals dead and uh, be, be uh, doing a post-mortem rather than seeing the symptoms uh, actually occurring. No specific treatment is known for this particular uh, toxin or suite of toxins in this particular case. Uh, evacuating the stomach contents is the only uh, thing that can uh, possibly help. And maybe even using something like activated charcoal to try to minimize the absorption of uh, the, the toxins. 